Hello everyone, I again welcome you all to my channel. We are actually learning area.net and in the previous session we have seen uh, different types of uh, data providers, what is SQL server, uh, what is area.net and how .net application uh, is going to connect with the database with the help of this mediator area.net. And uh, in this session we are going to see different classes of area.net and what exactly they are doing. So let's get started. So see, the first class of area.net is a connection class. Now, if you see this connection class, what exactly this is doing? It will provide you the physical connection to the data source. And uh, basically, this connection needs a connection string. I'll tell you how you can fetch this connection string from the database. So basically, in the connection class, you have to provide this string and with the help of this connection string, your .NET application is going to understand that this is the um, database, okay. So you will, you will, this application, any application is going to fetch that connection string of any of the database and then provide it in the, in the, in this class, connection class, so that your application going to understand that this is the database, okay, and I have to go here. So, uh, th this connection string has a database name basically, okay. It has a database name and we will see this uh, when we will code it, okay. So, this connection string has this uh, database name. I hope it is now understandable. Uh, the second uh, class is uh, something like uh, command. It's not command, it, it's command. So, this command class, now what is this command class? So, once your .NET application is connected, na, when your .NET application is connected to the, to any of the database, so it is important that you, that you fire any kind of or execute any kind of SQL query, right? So, this command class will going to, um, uh, it is going to place, let's say, place SQL query. So, any kind of SQL query, you can, you can put it over here in the command class and remember this command class need SQL query as well as the connection object here okay so you need a connection object here as well so what is this connection object basically the object that you have created here is going to pass here in the connection object okay so this is important so it is a comma so command class needs two things one is a SQL query and another is the connection object and then and then only your application is going to going to be connected fully packed with the database now otherwise it is going to be not connected so if you just write query then how your command uh, going to understand that where exactly should i fire this query so that's why you have to provide the connection object by because this connection object has the database okay i mean the database name and it exactly knows where i have to place this sql query so that's why i have to provide connection object here right uh, the next class is uh, we have uh, something like a data adapter, uh, sorry, data reader, let's say. Um, well, you see data reader and data adapter, let me write it in the, in, the, in this format only and I will tell you the difference uh, of these two. Now, see, now once you fire the, uh, once you place this SQL query, it is the data reader or the data, not the data adapter, but it is actually the data reader which will fire the this SQL query. It will execute this SQL query and get back the result. It, is, it will get back the result from the data source. So, what is this data reader? It is a stream based or forward only or read only retrieved of the query result. So, it has the result. It will retrieve the retrieve the result. From where? From the database. Na? Retrieve the result from DB. Okay. So, this is the work of this data reader. Now, what this, uh, what this data adapter is? So, data adapter will basically, it will also retrieve the result, but it generally says that it, 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 it purposes to bridge a gap between the uh, data set object and the physical data source. So, it is a bridge. It will create a bridge between a data object 
and uh, physical data source physical db okay so it is a bridge between the so it is going to be something like this uh, i will, uh, will give you the diagram and all but uh, so you just understand that data reader will retrieve the uh, result uh, retrieve the result from the db uh, basically it will fire this sql query and uh, retrieve the result from the database and it will show it to you the data adapter basically it is a bridge between the data object and the physical uh, database the last class uh, is uh, is known as data set now you see this data set is basically look like this it has uh, it has this uh, this table but it has multiple tables so maybe this is one table this is another table and so on so this is table 0 this is table 1 and so on okay so it has multiple tables so data set has multiple tables or collection of data table object and each object is a collection of data row and column so what is it it is having a collection of rows for of different tables and collection of column of different table basically this is the data set okay so that's why data set has uh, different tables uh, of diff uh, I mean the rows and columns however you can take uh, the data table as well well data table is a simple or a singular table only only one table but data set has multiple tables so if you have a larger larger data then you should use a data set if you have a small uh, you know uh, uh, data then you can use data table only now you you you, you understand these five uh, uh, classes but how exactly they are organized so to to understand the organization of these classes we need to understand the adio.net architecture and let's see how this adio.net architecture is is, uh, is is placed so let's understand this uh, let me take another pen here uh, so i have this adio.net architecture architecture well let's understand the adio.net architecture so first of all i'll make uh, some space here so that you can uh, you can see the whole picture okay so first of all in adio.net architecture we have our data source here so this is our data source so data source could be anything now so it could be data base xml file or anything so let's say it is a database only so above this database <laughs> my line is uh, actually it's hard to draw okay so this is a data source and just after that we have something called as connection huh? so we have this connection so we have this connection class so your data source has this connection class now above this connection class we have something called as command so you see it's a sequence so every time you write the code of adio you will you will go through the same sequence no issue so after this uh, this command class now you have two options and I'll, I'll i'll show you why you have two options for this reason uh, let's say for, let me first write here so there is something called as data adapter and a very important part i have missed but uh, i will cover up now so there is data adapter or a data reader you have two options here in this in this in this row now after the data adapter and data reader you have data set or data table so you have another two options data set or data table you can take any of it according to the requirement of your uh, application you will say data set or data table and above all you have dotnet applications so let me write here windows it could be a window application it could be console application or it could be web application okay i'm sorry this is web so so this is basically the adio.net architecture now i will tell you the very important thing here which i have not covered up here and this is uh, this section you see after you fire this so this command you know this connection uh, class what is going to do it has a connection string right basically it has a connection string which will connect let me just uh, it will so 
basically this uh, this connection is to connect this data source and this windows or any dotnet application just to connect these two things we have a, we have this connection and after that this is going to be sql query now so it will place your sql query now you see when you place this sql query so sql query could be insert it could be update it could be just display or it could be uh, maybe delete now you see that it has different meaning here now operations such as insert update needs a connection i mean it needs a uh, i mean uh, it needs a continuous connection to the database okay so so this ada.net has two options for you so it has two options and what are these two options see i'll just make it side so option is it has two options one is it is something called as connected architecture it is a theory i think uh, you're bored of it but uh, it is important to make your base clear and then we go for you know the uh, practical part so one is it has a connected architecture so this dotnet application so it is this is let's say this is a dotnet uh, so this is let's say dotnet application here so this is continuously connected with the data base okay so this is your db and this is 24 cross 7 or oh, let's say just 24 cross 7 is not actually the thing but you see it is a connected architecture so your application is going to be connected every time uh, you require the data with the database right so this is one thing another thing is it has another architecture known as disconnected architecture disconnected architecture actually i have extra c here you can remove this so what this disconnected architecture is it means your dotnet application it means your dotnet application will not going to uh, connect to this database i mean uh, like 24 cross 7 whenever it needs the data whenever it needs the data it will connect it to the database so this is connect and once the data is being fetched out once the data is being fetched out okay the connection is going to be disconnected okay so this is disconnected here yeah, it is disconnected okay so when your dotnet application needs data it will connect to the database when the data comes back it will disconnect the uh, database so this is a disconnected architecture so insert update operation needs live connection so it, it needs a connected architecture however display uh, or any other operation doesn't need any kind of connected architecture it needs disconnected architecture so it has an advantage here and i'll tell you about advantage and all but uh, it supports adio.net supports two architecture one is connected and one is disconnected so now in this section <coughs> why we are why we are stop here for data adapter and data reader is because data adapter uses this disconnected architecture remember so data adapter this data adapter use disconnected architecture and data reader is going to use data reader is going to use the connected architecture and that's why you have two options so once you fire once you place this sql query it depends on your sql query whether it should use the uh, data adapter or it should use the data reader so if you need the live connection i mean insert or update if you have then you should go for um, a data reader or it depends actually i cannot say that for insert and update but uh, uh, it depends on, uh, on on basically the requirement so this is data reader use live connection and data adapter use uh, not live or maybe disconnected architecture likewise i hope i hope it is easy to understand now now 
whatsoever result you will get you know that data adapter and data reader basically are bridge and it, it, it has it, it contains the result of the SQL query. So, data reader has the result of insert, maybe have the result of update, maybe have the result of display, maybe have the result of delete. So, it, 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 it gets, it holds the result here of SQL query and then it will pass it to the data set and this data set or data table and remember this data set or data table initially initially they are empty initially they are empty but when this data reader and data adapter pass the result to the data set it will become fill okay they will fill and then whatsoever result is there in the data set or data table you can show it to the windows console or web it depends on you why we are doing is is because data adapter and data reader when it holds the result when it holds the holds the result it is not in the correct format okay it is i mean it, it is jumbled up so to make it in a correct format or make to make it in a very sequenced order we ha we have we have the data set here the empty data set and then in the empty data set we we put this result in a correct order in a in a precise manner in a sequence order and then this uh, this empty data set is going to be filled up and this filled data can be can be shown in the windows can be shown in the console application or can be shown in the web application so this is how your adio.net architecture works so i hope that uh, this is somehow clear to you and if you like this video then please like the video share my video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you so much guys.